Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Spring Boot security episode. Today we are going to see how to enable SSL and HTTPS for Spring Boot apps. If you remember back from our previous episodes, we discussed that uh, no matter how you configure your security, if the data in transit is not safe, then your security settings are really not that useful. So we really need to enable SSL in order for our application to be truly secure. And we're going to see how we can enable that for Spring Boot apps in this episode. Uh, before we begin, I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Now, let's see what are the steps needed to enable SSL for Spring Boot apps. Well, turns out we just need to do three things. The first thing that we need is a certificate. Now, as you mentioned earlier, certificates can be self-signed or we can buy one from a trusted provider. Uh, for today's demo, we're going to use a self-signed cert certificate because, you know, it does the job pretty well and we don't, you know, have to spend any money on that, which is always cool. But for production, don't use self-signed certificates, just for development purposes only. The second thing that we need to do is we need to modify our application properties file and turn on some SSL settings and configure, for example, SSL ports, the name of the certificate that you want to use and things like that. And the third step is we need to add a bin definition for a servlet web server factory, you know, type of object, because ultimately our HTTPS traffic, you know, is handled by a web uh, server. And because you're using an embedded Tomcat container, we need to tell it that now we want to use HTTPS and also we need to tell him to redirect all HTTP traffic to our HTTPS uh, port. So in that way, no matter how users try to access our application, they will always get directed to a secure one. In order to generate a self-signed certificate, we need to navigate to the Java SDK installation directory. In my case, that's located under C program files, Java, JDK 11, uh, dash bin. And we need to use the key tool executable, okay? And I have that executable, you know, right here. I'm going to copy paste this long command because I don't know it by heart. But basically, you're using the key tool executable to generate a key or a certificate in our case. The alias for this one is going to be boot security. This is the type of our key. Uh, this is the encryption size. Uh, we are also giving it a name. So our certificate will be named boot security.p12. This is the validity of our certificate. Now hit enter. We need to provide a password. I'll type in boot security. Okay, and now you have to enter some name, some information about the certificate. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you put in here, but you know, I'm just going to put um to put some information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And now we have our certificate. Um, called boot security p12 generated. Now one important thing, you need to run this command as an administrator, okay, or root. You cannot run it as a normal user because then you'll get uh, access denied error. Okay, so we've generated our um, certificate. Now we need to find it because it's actually generated here. So I'm going to use boot security and we have this, this boot security.p12 file. And just to keep things simple, we need to copy it and we can put it inside our application. Now, you can leave it here and reference it from this location, but I think it's better to put it under our application because this will make it portable. So when you download the source code, you know, it should also work for you. So I'll open up, um, I'll open up IntelliJ, sorry, it's the wrong one. Okay, I'll open up IntelliJ and here under resources, you know, I'm going to paste that certificate boot security p12 okay uh, we have generated a certificate and now we can move on to step number two what we need to do now 
is we need to modify our application properties file and make our application aware that we are trying to use SSL um, for security reasons. So I opened up application properties. I'm going to delete this line because you're not going to use the 8082 anymore. We have to use uh, a port for SSL. Okay, and this is one example of configuration. Okay, so our server port is 8443 for SSL. It, it can also be 443, but in my case, I have a process running on that port, so I cannot use it. Uh, then we want to enable SSL. Okay, so this is true. And then we have to provide some information about um, the, the self certificate that we just used. So our key store is source main resources boot security p12 it's this file over here then we have a password for our certificate it's a boot security it's what we entered uh, if you remember uh, in the command line then we have the key store type which again we can find it here so pkcs12 and we also have you know the alias for our certificate which you can also see here see alias boot security so this is how you populate um, these fields for the SSL key store okay so now we have uh, our application configured for SSL we are not going to access it on port 8082 we are going to access it on port 8443 but we also need to uh, do one last thing in order for this to work we need to tell our embedded server container um, that we want to use SSL and that we want to use this new port and we also want to configure a redirection because you know if our users by mistake type in HTTP uh, we want to get them redirected back to HTTPS so we don't want to leave any doors open that can become uh, future security vulnerabilities now we just need to add in a new bin definition and our example should be complete so i'm going to copy paste it here also the import files so we kind of need to declare a bean of type servlet web server factory and this is where we are going to configure uh, our servlet container because basically um, we need to make it aware that we want to use https now and what we also add is we we are adding a new HTTP to HTTPS redirect. So all traffic that we, that previously uh, was for was hitting our HTTP port 8082 needs to be redirected to 8443. So in this way, regardless of how our user is trying to access the application, um, they will automatically get redirected there. So this redirect connector is pretty simple. It's just a, a standard uh, connector, um, which is you know using the transport protocol HTTP the original port is 8082 which is not secure and we are either we are redirecting for 844 free okay so this is pretty standard we are adding this redirect connector here add additional Tomcat connectors and we are obtaining this connector using this method and in here basically we are specifying that you know we want our traffic to be secure and we want to use SSL okay so this is what you need to do in order to enable SSL for a Spring Boot application uh, certificate application properties and then um, override some things on uh, the servlet web server factory bean cool now let's see if this was successful we'll fire up the application and hopefully everything should be set and now our data should be secure while in transit. Okay, so Tomcat started on port 8443 and you see here HTTPS which is okay okay and we have 882 for http okay but this traffic should be redirected back here let's see if we obtain this behavior so and you calling to window i'm going to say localhost 8443 and i'm going to use 
sorry I'm going to use HTTPS now yes localhost 8443 okay because we have on a self-signed certificate obviously we will get this warning okay and we are getting here some information that this site is not secure this is perfectly fine we are using a self-signed certificate it's not been you know uh, granted by a certified authority so it's pretty normal to get these kind of messages and we'll choose to ignore this message okay and this is it we are here on HTTPS localhost 8443 and this is pretty cool now what happens for example if we go to localhost 8082 so we're trying to access you know our previous app well we get redirected to HTTPS localhost 8443 and obviously this is going to work exactly as before you, you know you notice even the sign in here says that we are using HTTPS then one to three now I'm logged in and now I can see my profile page I can see my home page okay so we have successfully enabled SSL for our Spring Boot application before we close I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because i would love to get feedback from you guys you can also find me on twitter at romanian coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye